Hello and welcome to the Monday, February 20th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. This weekend we had a couple of quick diaries, one by Guy about, well, uh, phishing emails that we actually got in our Internet Storm Center uh, inbox. Yes, we do get phishing emails uh, too, thanks to all the phishing actors sending them to us to give us something to write about. Guy used it to actually uh, well, look at some recent trends here in these phishing emails. One thing he noticed is a lot of use of IPFS.io to host some of the malicious uh, content. IPFS IO is the interplanetary file system. I think I mentioned a couple of times before, it's sort of a distributed system to host files, which of course makes it quite difficult to take anything down there, even though they do have some takedown mechanism uh, built into the site, if I remember uh, correctly. Also, uh, one important note here, many of uh, these emails, well, uh, no longer any typos. Uh, Sometimes actually uh, real emails uh, have more typos than some of these phishing emails. Phishing emails uh, do know about uh, spell checkers. So that makes them of course a little bit uh, more difficult to identify. Looking for DNS requests for IPFS.io, certainly worthwhile, I think. But yes, there are some legitimate uses here. So keep an eye on it, uh, but I wouldn't outright block it at this point. And Twitter late last week and this weekend uh, caused quite a stir by altering the way they're using two-factor authentication. And now you had always three different ways uh, to do two-factor authentication with Twitter. There was SMS, so text messages. There was uh, the one-time password authentication app, uh, also sometimes known as Google Authenticator. And then you could also use uh, security keys. The change now is that you are no longer able to use SMS if you're using a free account you basically need to pay to use SMS however the other options still remain and well in some ways they're actually the better options as far as uh, two-factor authentication goes so definitely you know set up some kind of one-time password or security key uh, for uh, your Twitter account and uh, then you shouldn't really have to worry too much about the SMS messages going away of course the problem here is a little bit that SMS messages tend to be the easiest uh, to use uh, option here and uh, also sufficiently secure for many users, in particular users who don't use Twitter sort of for any commercial or more sensitive uh, purposes. And Fortinet released updates for its sort of entire software lineup, 40Web, 40NAC, 40OS, 40Proxy, fixing 40 different vulnerabilities with uh, two of these vulnerabilities being rated uh, critical. The first one of the critical of vulnerabilities, CVE 2022-39952, that was announced here, also has a proof of concept coming from Horizon 3 attack team. They have released the proof of concepts like this in the past, so uh, certainly a reliable uh, source here. Fortinet calls the vulnerability an unauthenticated remote write to the system. Horizon 3 calls it an unauthenticated remote code execution. Typically, there's only a fairly small step from an unauthenticated write to remote code execution. After all, you just have to write a file that's going to be executed. So uh, that way, I think both here are somewhat right. Maybe... FortiGuard tries to downplay things a little bit. The second uh, critical uh, flaw is CVE 2021-42756, CVSS score of 9.3, and uh, it could enable an unauthenticated remote attacker to achieve arbitrary code execution via the 40 web proxy. All it takes is a specifically crafted HTTP request. Given that we have seen sort of a history of rapid exploitation in products like this, I would highly recommend that you do prioritize patching. 
And then I think it was uh, Friday I mentioned the vulnerability in Clam AV, the open source antivirus engine, mentioned that uh, this is a product often embedded in other uh, commercial products. Well, uh, Clam AV is actually supported by Cisco, so no big surprise that uh, Cisco has released patches here, in particular for its secure endpoint, secure endpoint private cloud, a secure web appliance and also email security appliance so a couple of products here from cisco that embed the clam av scanning libraries and need to be updated well and that's it for today so thanks again for listening and if i missed any story that i should have covered uh, please let me know thanks and talk to you again tomorrow bye